Hi everybody, Adam here from Audience, and today we're going to be showing you how to get your DAW set up with your ID interface. In today's video, we're going to be looking at GarageBand. So first things first, we're going to need to connect our interface. I recommend doing that first. If you've got any speakers or monitors, leave the headphones unplugged for now, leave the monitors switched off whilst we do the rest. We don't want any kind of clicks and pops causing any issues down the road. So we're going to plug in, I have an ID14 here, but the process is the same with an ID4. Plug the USB-C cable into your Mac or PC. If it's a Mac, it may be a USB-C on the other end. If it's a PC, it may be USB-A, which is the larger square connection. Both should work exactly the same. If you're doing this with an ID44, you'll need to plug in the AC connection at the same time. Now, whilst it is possible to use an ID interface with some limited functionality just by plugging it straight into the computer, we highly recommend going to the Audience website and getting the latest drivers. This means that you will have maximum compatibility, full functionality, and everything that the interface can do will be available to you. So let's go to the Audient website now. Once we are at the audience.com website, we can go to the top to products and find the link to the audio interface that we're using. In my case, the ID14. Having said that, whether you're using an ID4, 14 or 44, the drivers are the same and can be used across the entire range. Now we're on the ID14 page, we can go to download at to the top right and that will give us both the documentation, so the manual and the start guide, as well as the Mac OS drivers and the Windows drivers. Download the relevant one, install them through that process, and I'll see you back here shortly. Once that's installed, you may need to run the ID app at the first time, but this may come up automatically when you plug in the ID interface. The first time you do this, it will come up with the Arc Creative Hub window where we have some fantastic software and tutorials available to you as you register your interface. I'm already a member, so I'm just going to close this window. Now I can see the ID mixer in front of me. This comes up for the ID 14 and 44, but for the ID 4, everything is done on the front of the interface. No mixer required. At this point, I'm going to plug in a microphone and then get that ready to use in my DAW. Now here's one I prepared earlier. This is a vocal microphone that needs 48 volt phantom power. On the front of each unit is a 48 volt switch per channel. So I'm going to turn that on, on the channel one, which is where I have this connected. On the ID4, the 48 volt control is on the rear of the unit. Once the microphone is powered, we're going to need to adjust the gain on the front of the interface until we see reasonable levels. Now on the ID 14 and 44, we can see in the ID mixer now on screen that there is appropriate level coming in, if not a little much. On the ID 4, we move the monitor DAW knob all the way to the left. And then on the LEDs on the front of the unit, we should then be able to see the levels moving as needed. So now I've got my microphone plugged in and that's all set with the levels it's time to fire up GarageBand. Now GarageBand has come up with the previous project, but let's go through the settings first to make sure that we're working with the ID14 or 44 or ID4. So we're going to the GarageBand menu at the top and clicking on Preferences. And then we're going to head over to Audio slash MIDI. We're going to select an output device and we're going to choose our Audience ID interface and that will also select Input Device at the same time. GarageBand is really helpful that it, we don't have to change anything else to make it work. That's it. We close this down and we're ready to go. Now I'm going to quickly get rid of this track because when you make a new GarageBand project, it comes up with this set of options. Choose track type and I'm going to choose record using a microphone or line input. And then make sure that input one is selected because this microphone is connected to input one and the tick box, I want to hear my music as I play and record. So we're going to click Create. So now that's bringing up levels on GarageBand. Now you may not be able to hear this yet. Now don't worry, the first thing that we have to do is turn on our speakers or monitors or plug in our headphones. Beyond that, by default, the ID interfaces have their volume set at zero, so we don't have any unfortunate accidents or pops, clicks. 
So if we press the volume button for the speakers or for the headphones, we then turn up the encoder until we're getting level that we want to hear. From here with this track in GarageBand, we're almost ready to go. We can use the EQ, we can use compressors, we can do anything we like at this point. And the monitoring down here is ticked. So we see this orange button. So you should be able to hear that now with any processing that we see at the bottom here with the compressor, EQ, sends, anything that we want to do to it, we will hear through GarageBand. The downside of this is there is a very slight bit of latency involved. That is to say, a slight delay between when the sound comes from the ID interface, comes into GarageBand, gets processed in this way, then comes back out. For a lot of people, this isn't a problem. Some people are quite sensitive to that. If you're sensitive to that, then what you might want to do is untick the monitoring button here and then pull up the ID mixer. If you're using an ID4, it is slightly different, but we'll come back to that in a second. The ID14 and 44 have sliders here for different levels coming out from different sources. So in this case, mic one, which is this one, we just turn up this fader until it's as loud as we want it to be, and then we should be able to hear it in the headphones or on the speakers. Alternatively, we do have the monitoring enabled in Logic. Now, there may be an issue that you find that I like to call ghosting, which is where you can hear a doubled or kind of chorusing sound on the, the vocal or guitar, which might sound kind of hollow or robotic. That happens when the same signal comes through twice, once with near zero latency, straight through the ID interface, and a second time through GarageBand. So we need to decide which one we want to keep and which one we want to turn off. In this case, I'm going to say that I want the processing through GarageBand. So I'm going to make sure this monitoring is turned on, then bring up the ID mixer and turn this fader down. That way we only have one copy of the signal coming through and no potential for problems. On the ID4, there is a far more physical control than the ID mixer, which is the monitor mix. If we turn this all the way to the left, we hear just the input from the microphone and DI inputs. If we turn this all the way to the right, we only hear GarageBand. And if we have this halfway, we hear an equal mix of both. If we want more of the input, we go left. If we want more of GarageBand, we go right. And that's it. Any questions you've got, please feel free to leave a comment down in the section below, or feel free to reach out to us at Audience and through our support team. Thanks everybody for watching. Good luck and have fun.